Chapter 9 The Acceptance of the Atonement Section 1 The Acceptance of Reality Fear of the will of God is one of the strangest beliefs the human mind has ever made. It could not possibly have occurred unless the mind were already profoundly split, making it possible for it to be afraid of what really is. Reality cannot threaten anything except illusions, since reality can only uphold truth. The very fact that the will of God, which is what you are, is perceived as fearful demonstrates that you are afraid of what you are. It is not then the will of God of which you are afraid, but yours. Your will is not the ego's, and that is why the ego is against you. What seems to be the fear of God is really the fear of your own reality. It is impossible to learn anything consistently in a state of panic. If the purpose of this course is to help you remember what you are, and if you believe that what you are is fearful, then it must follow that you will not learn this course. Yet the reason for the course is that you do not know what you are. If you do not know what your reality is, why would you be so sure that it is fearful? The association of truth and fear, which would be highly artificial at most, is particularly inappropriate in the minds of those who do not know what the truth is. All this could mean is that you are arbitrarily associating something beyond your awareness with something you do not want. It is evident, then, that you are judging something of which you are totally unaware. You have set up this strange situation so that it is impossible to escape from it without a guide who does know what your reality is. The purpose of this guide is merely to remind you of what you want. He is not attempting to force an alien will upon you. He is merely making every possible effort within the limits you impose upon him to re-establish your own will in your awareness. You have imprisoned your will beyond your own awareness, where it remains but cannot help you. When I said that the Holy Spirit's function is to sort out the true from the false in your mind, I meant that he has the power to look into what you have hidden and recognize the will of God there. His recognition of this will can make it real to you because he is in your mind, and therefore he is your reality. If, then, his perception of your mind brings its reality to you, he is helping you to remember what you are. The only source of fear in this process is what you think you will lose. Yet, it is only what the Holy Spirit sees that you can possibly have. I have emphasized many times that the Holy Spirit will never call upon you to sacrifice anything. But if you ask the sacrifice of reality of yourself, the Holy Spirit must remind you that this is not God's will, because it is not yours. There is no difference between your will and God's. If you did not have a split mind, you would not recognize that willing is salvation because it is communication. It is impossible to communicate in alien tongues. You and your Creator can communicate through creation because that and only that is your joint will. A divided mind cannot communicate because it speaks for different things to the same mind. 
This loses the ability to communicate simply because confused communication does not mean anything. A message cannot be communicated unless it makes sense. How sensible can your messages be when you ask for what it is that you do not want? Yet, as long as you are afraid of your will, that is precisely what you are asking for. You may insist that the Holy Spirit does not answer you, but it might be wiser to consider the kind of questioner that you are. You do not ask only for what you want. This is because you are afraid you might receive it, and you would. That is why you persist in asking the teacher who could not possibly give you what you want. Of him you can never learn what it is, and this gives you the illusion of safety. Yet you can never be safe from truth, but only in truth. Reality is the only safety. Your will is your salvation because it is the same as God's. The separation is nothing more than the belief that it is different. No right mind can believe that its will is stronger than God's. If then, a mind believes that its will is different from his, it can only decide either that there is no God or that God's will is fearful. The former accounts for the atheist and the latter for the martyr, who believes that God demands sacrifice. Either of these insane decisions will induce panic, because the atheist believes he is alone and the martyr believes that God is crucifying him. Yet no one really wants either abandonment or retaliation, even though many seek both. Can you ask the Holy Spirit for gifts such as these and actually expect to receive them? He cannot give you something you do not want. When you ask the universal giver for what you do not want, you are asking for what cannot be given because it was never created. It was never created because it was never your will for you. Ultimately, everyone must remember the will of God, because ultimately everyone must recognize himself. This recognition is the recognition that his will and God's are one. In the presence of truth, there are no unbelievers and no sacrifices. In the security of reality, fear is totally meaningless. To deny what is can only seem to be fearful. Fear cannot be real without a cause, and God is the only cause. God is love, and you do want Him. This is your will. Ask for this and you will be answered, because you will be asking for what belongs to you. When you ask the Holy Spirit for what would hurt you, He cannot answer, because nothing can hurt you, and so you are asking for nothing. Any wish that stems from the ego is a wish for nothing and to ask for it is not a request. It is merely a denial in the form of a request. The Holy Spirit is not concerned with form, being aware only of meaning. The ego cannot ask the Holy Spirit for anything because there is complete communication failure between them. Yet you can ask for everything of the Holy Spirit because your requests to Him are real, being of your right mind. Would the Holy Spirit deny the will of God? And could He fail to recognize it in his son? You do not recognize the enormous waste of energy you expend in denying truth. What would you say of someone who persists in attempting the impossible, believing that to achieve it is to succeed? The belief that you must have the impossible in order to be happy is totally at variance with the principles of creation. God could not will that happiness depend on what you could never have. The fact that God is love does not require belief but it does require acceptance. It is indeed possible for you to deny facts, although it is impossible for you to change them. If you hold your hands over your eyes, you will not see because you are interfering with the laws of seeing. If you deny love, you will not know because your cooperation is the law of its being. You cannot change laws you did not make, and the laws of happiness were created for you, not by you.